welcome back to Blackjack, once again recording from Scenic Blackjack's parents' house. I'm Blackjack Aviani, and I was not expecting this video until tomorrow. They said Thursday at 5 a.m. I even have my alarm set for 4.15, and, uh, you know, being sick. Okay, I went and got my robe on. Still don't have Athena. <laughs> no, Mr. Sakurai presents Terry Bogard. There we go. Hello everyone, this is Masahiro Sakurai from Sora Limited. The Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Game was recently honored with five awards at this year's Japan Game Awards. Oh, that's cool. Oh, it's received um, I saw as I was scrolling down that there are, uh... Me costumes revealed, but um, I didn't see what they were. It's a great many awards on top of that as well. Each award is very meaningful to me, so I, so I would like to take the opportunity to extend my thanks to all those who have voted and to all those who have supported us. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Without further ado, let's begin the presentation. First, we'll start with what the Neo Geo is. <laughs> it refers to a 1990 video game console for use in arcades and at home, as well as to the name of the system itself. In arcades and in 1990, the equivalent to the Super NES had only just released in Japan, so if you wanted to play arcade games at home before then, the only option was to play the less polished ports on the Nintendo Entertainment System. However, with the Neo Geo system, you could play the arcade versions of games at home with no drop in quality. I wasn't aware of that. It was right around the year that I started working for a game company. Back then, Japan had rental services for arcade games. Really? In other words, you could go to a rental store, rent an arcade game, take it home, and play it. Huh. How come we never got that? After that, they were sold for home use, but a single game would cost about 30,000 yen. That's expensive. But if you think about it, compared to playing a game in the arcade 300 times at 100 yen per play, you're getting your money's worth. At the Hang on a second. I want to do a little... Okay. Okay, conversion rate currency. Uh, foreign exchange rates. Uh... Stop. I'll just do it here. Uh, again, to where's American dollar? U.S. dollar. Okay. Thirty thousand yen is two hundred and seventy-five dollars and thirty-one cents today, and that is um, in nineteen ninety. Uh, that would be. Uh, no, this is just trying to, this is trying to tell me what it is, 1,990, uh, okay, oh, in year, hang on, $553.53. That's what it would be today. At the time, some people actually thought this was cheap. Oh no. <laughs> are you I one mean, of them? There really are people Probably who not. played games in the Super Smash Bros. series 1,000 or even 10,000 times. Anyway, the MBS, as it was called then, was sold in various places, and for an arcade machine, it wasn't all that expensive. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't look it. You could also get them on lease. Yeah. That's why you'd end up seeing lots of candy stores having a metal slug cabinet. The home version of the Neo Geo came with this controller. Can you see? It has four buttons. And this is the actual console itself. 
Here is the reset button, and we need to slot in the big game cartridges. Huge game cartridges. This is the Neo Geo. Just kidding. Actually, this is the Neo Geo X, the portable version that was. That's pretty cool. That's a neat way to sell it. You could also insert it into this docking station and play it as a home console. Hi, Athena. Beat Nintendo Switch to it. A portable, multi-purpose console. Updated iterations of past systems are emblematic of the Neo Geo. Sounds Next, cool. Let's talk about what Fatal Fury is. It released in 1991. It's a fighting the same game. Year as Street Fighter 2, but this one came later. It launched after Street Fighter 2. Like many of the other fighters, Fatal Fury was often regarded as a title that was developed yeah, to capitalize they would have been in development on the popularity of Street Fighter 2, but that's not really the case. Actually, both Street Fighter 2 and Fatal Fury were developed using the original Street Fighter as a foundation. Huh. In fact, the yeah. development of Fatal Fury was started by one of the planners of Street Fighter. It's kind of amazing how Street Fighter managed to have Did I just such a you successful say, wow. franchise. This one is also a multiplayer focused fighting game. First game sucked beyond suck. In this story, someone named Jeff Bogard is killed by Geese Howard. Geese Howard holy starts cow. up a fighting tournament in Southtown, which he runs. They say holy to cow, but then they say death, damn it. Terry enters the tournament, which is known as King of Fighters. I mentioned the term King of Fighters, something you may have heard before. Yes, there's actually a popular series called the King of Fighters, and that series was named after the fighting tournament within the world of Fatal Fury. I don't know about separate. They, and they're Terry like Bogart, branching paths. And the protagonist of Fatal Fury, also appears in all the games in the King of Fighters series as one of the main characters. If you want to play a game from either of the Fatal Fury series or the King of Fighters series, many of them are available now on Nintendo Switch as part of the Arcade Archive series. Makes sense. You may not know which one to play first, but my recommendations from the Fatal Fury series would be Fatal Fury Special. From the King of Fighters series, they sure do like calling stuff special in Japan, huh? But if you want to play a fighting game with all sorts of strategic elements, then I recommend the King of Fighters 98. Okay. Next, the guy in the background not using his sleeve. Actually, this video was recorded about one month prior to its release. That's because we need to translate and edit videos like this one. And yeah. That takes time. The game footage you see here is not from the final production ROM, so please understand that there may be some elements that. Please understand. The final game. Since we have the opportunity, I want to talk about Terry using a lot of SNK lingo, meaning in this discussion, the younger generations may feel a little out of the loop. I think I will too. But there's nothing to worry about. When we released the original Nintendo 64 version of Super Smash Brothers, I was often asked, who is Samus? Whether or not the character is fun to play as is more important than whether the character is new or old. Or really? whether I would think it would be Captain Falcon anyone. that would be asked, who? I want to make sure I present Terry to you in such a way that you can fully understand his appeal. So thank you. Thank okay, you! Let's begin. I'm gonna take a short little break. And lo, I have returned. I had to get a drink and... Actually, I forgot to get a drink. I turned the lights on. Tried to get Athena, but she bit me again. Yay! This is Terry Bogard in Super Smash Brothers. Tori Kintong. He's still wearing an outfit that reflects the era of his original game. Even we with did our his best to make him look cool in a variety of ways. When he stands next to you, it almost makes you wonder, is this really a Super Smash Brothers game? Doesn't it? Just like you, when you're playing one-on-one, -on -one, he'll face the opponent. Actually, he always looks in the opponent's direction. Even if you move him to a location behind the opponent, he'll quickly turn around, always keeping yeah. his focus on the opponent. Let's talk about his moves. His neutral attacks it's a big jab, stadium. body blow, and high kick. I wouldn't think it would be that huge. Each move is something familiar from the Fatal oh, Fury series. Oh, okay, now I see in the background. They're playing it in a football stadium. This is a move you can use in real bout. I kind of thought it would be, you know, specially made in the original for series, it was the one tournament. Of the special moves. His tilt attacks are middle kick, rising upper, 
and undercarriage. Compared to you, his attack speed is slower. This is to match his original series. Yeah, well, I figured it would be. Now for smash attacks. First up, backspin kick. That's impressive. This smash attack is the equivalent to his strong attack, but the motion is even cooler than in his original series. Yeah, it looks cool. Next, wild upper and slide kick. Both are from the original series. Then his midair moves. Jump, then chop. Jump, Look at those then things kick. swirling around in the background. Jump, then backward kick. Is that like a spotlight? Oh, and then somersault kick. However, this somersault kick was not included in the original series. But we needed a move to attack up. So we created a new move. They did, or. Also, jump just in and then karate punch for a down air attack. If you successfully pull off a down air, it's possible to attack with a meteor effect, as you can see here. It's basically like views. Next, I'll cover his throws. Forward throw is his familiar buster throw. All right. His back throw is also buster throw. Makes and sense. His down throw is neck breaker drop. Okay. Doesn't look like he grabs onto their neck, though. In fact, yeah, he used he it in the game drop. Fatal Fury, Wild Ambition. Wild Ambition. I miss playing that game on Hyper Neo Geo 64. <laughs> and then, his up throw is Grasping Upper. This sort of dodge attack can be performed after a spot dodge. I mentioned dodge attack. Spot dodge? And this actually does exist. During a spot dodge, immediately press the button to yeah. counterattack. What's a spot dodge? That During one of those attack, terms that they said was going to confuse the younger players? So this kind of move gives you the advantage when you counterattack. Now Let's go to Soul. Okay, sounds good to me. They got great internet there. His neutral special with just the B button is Power Wave. Oh, Wave! Depending on how long you press the button, you'll use one of two types of special attacks, weak and strong. Makes sense. This one is weak and kind of slow, and this one is strong. Fast, isn't it? For you, in his original game, you used three buttons, so there were weak, medium, and strong attacks. For Terry Bogart, Notice how they're no longer showing him playing this with two game, controllers. But there were only two buttons for punch, so that's why he only has two attack levels, weak and strong. Makes this sense. This rule applies to all of his special attacks, so please keep that in mind. By the way, the attack power wave is a move that shoots energy along the ground. But how does it look in the air? In his oh. original game, you couldn't use this move in the air. But this you can now! As of the King of Fighters 96, oh, the power wave ability had a shorter range, so we've recreated that version of the move. It's oh, a useful that's cool. move in the air and helps keep opponents in check. Next, we have a special Makes performer sense. holding in the direction of your opponent, Burning Knuckles. This move also has a weak and strong version, as well as a command input. Like the Hadouken command input from Street Fighter 2, you perform this command using the directional inputs, down, to the side, in the direction of your opponent, and then press the button. So, fireball. Doing so makes the move a bit stronger. This means that Burning Knuckle has four variations. Weak without command input, and strong without command input. Weak with command input, and strong with command input. The strong version using the command input is of course the most powerful. Well, yeah, of You'll course You'll hear it a noise is. when you input the command. Oh. And if you've succeeded, you might also notice uh. some green mixing with the flames. It may be slight, but there is a difference. My god, look at the detail on his jeans! The strong version with the command input really is strong, even capable of KOing opponents. At what percent? Blocked, however, like right away? So be on the lookout for that. In such a case, you'll be left wide open. And this is a first for the Super Smash Brothers series. Oh. The side specials are split into two versions, a back special and a front special. Interesting. That means there's one more side special than usual, Crack Shoot. This is a familiar move from his original game. There's also a command input version. It's and because he's always facing you, then... Buttons down to the back, followed by the A or B button. And they're really loving it. The command version really loving it. I was gonna say, really laying on 
all the fighting game stuff. It creates a bit of an arc. I'm kind of surprised this hasn't brought in more, like, Street Fighter and other fighting game players to Smash tournaments. There's something I want you to remember. Yes? When you do a crack shoot off screen, this is how it will look. Yeah. Terry swings with his whole body when using burning knuckle and crack shoot, so it can be hard to recover. However, if you keep pressing backwards without infinite commands, you should be able to initiate crack shoot in the direction you're trying to recover. Let me show you one more time. Do this, then continue to press backward. Interesting. And then you can recover. If you press too quickly or input some commands, you'll fly right off the stage, so be careful. Bye, Terry. Rising tackle. It also has weak and strong versions, each with differing heights. Yeah. And did you notice that if you hold down briefly to charge, your whole body glows a little? That's cool. In this case, your whole body will be invincible at the start. Either way, your legs will be invincible. Okay. An example of this invincible. I'd like to have in invincible legs. With the standard rising tackle. Unfortunately, I have weak ligaments. I got completely wiped out when I threw myself at them. Skid. But with rising tackle's charged command version, you can't be hit at this moment. So you come out on top. You clip through the opponent, but yeah. You can of course use rising tackle as a recovery as well. Even after using burning knuckle or crack shoot, you can still use rising tackle. This is also very helpful when you're trying to recover, so please keep that in mind. His down special is power dunk. Power dunk! An attack that rises and descends. I'm calling it Dunk. He must play a mean game of basketball. This side, down, diagonally, down command input is also known as a Shoryuken command. If you can pull it off, you'll be invincible at the start of the move. All right. Also, you can hear a sound when it connects. But That's the sound of wooden out. boxes falling downstairs. Now, let's talk about canceling specials. Okay. I'd really like you to keep this in mind. Then I shall try. First, if you use a special For you. after attacking with a standard attack. The special God, you can see his calves twitch when he does finished. that. That makes sense, right? But here's what happens if you cancel out of it. At this moment here, if you've successfully entered a special command input, the rest of the animation will be cancelled, allowing you to attack again immediately. Interesting. I'll do that again. Throw out a kick like normal. And once your leg extends, you'll perform the move. Okay. I'm gonna call Ryu back Set it up so that when you attack, you can go straight into a special. So now you're going to tell us that this special will increase command. your offensive options. Please try this out. For example, neutral attack one, two, and power dunk. This is a bread and butter combo. Aside from that, you can also get Terry to fly out and attack in an M. You know, so far he's been using in fighting game games, terms, but he hasn't really used on the ground. But specific in Fatal Fury. Ultimate, it's possible to cancel aerial moves. The types of aerial attacks that you can cancel are limited to things like neutral air attacks or down air attacks. Yeah. But I think it would be wise to use these combos to expand your offensive options. It's 3 p.m. Why am I so tired? Last, Soy sauce for geese! Smash. His final smash begins with a triple geyser. Terry will shoot three geysers straight forward. However, if you think that's all, you're very mistaken. <laughs> oh, I didn't think that was all. There we go. As you can see, we haven't heard the line yet. If Triple Geyser connects, you'll follow up with Power Dunk and Buster Wolf. It's three moves in one. It's a visually striking combo. 
Special? You may be wondering what happened to his original Super Special moves. I wasn't. Yes, they're here too. Okay, that's all right. That's With some the usual rules. When Terry's damage meter rises Fatal up Fury to 100% or higher, and in stamina mode, when his overall HP drops to 30% or less, he's steaming. You'll see this go. He's steaming mad. At this point, if you enter the specific command, you can initiate the power geyser you see here. The command input is: if I borrow the way it's said in the original game. Down, angle down, side, angle down, forward. Well, it's a bit complicated. Downward, then backward, then forward. You see? Yeah, it's it downward, all, so backward, and then the jolting the forward. Be it right or left. In that case, no matter which direction you're going to... I don't have the manual the right dexterity to play him! Forward. It's like this. Downward, I'd be amazed backward, at anyone who forward. does! Or down, and then the opposite direction, if that's forward. And then, there's his other super special move. There is another. So the thing we saw earlier wasn't his final smash. You can initiate this one by repeating the Hadouken command input twice. Down to side, then down to side again. Okay, I might be able to do that. Might. I love fighting games, but I'm so bad at them. Moves using the original game's this is just about the only one I can, can play. you can also use simplified command inputs. In the case of Power Geyser, remember this. Down, side, down, forward. Okay. put the command downward to the side, to the back, downward again. That would be so much easier forward, on a joystick, though. In the case of Buster Wolf, it's simply down, side, down, side. That should be easier to remember. Is it? Even though the command input is complex, it can still be blocked with ease. Since these moves can only be used when Terry has taken a lot of damage, you'll be in even more danger if your opponent blocks. So they're high risk and high return. Please save them for when you really need to make a last ditch effort. Mm -hmm. You can use it again and again, but be careful. Your opponent may be able to predict your move well, and take action. Yeah. Essentially, it's best to use that happens it with any move. Expected, or to cancel out of a combo, like this. Ooh, I like those fireworks. For the taunts, I decided to match his original game. Say the line! His up taunt is, hey, come on, come on, from the King of Fighters series. His down taunt spins his hat like in the real bout series. And his side taunt is stand up from Gutto, Mark of the Wolves. I've demonstrated him using various special moves in the game so far, and you can hear his voice. Like that. We've incorporated both his longer remarks, like Power Wave, from older titles, and his shorter remarks, like Rock You, from newer titles. Who are his voice actors, then? And here are his color variations. There's a good variety of colors available from across the series, and the cat design is slightly different in each version. They're based on his original games, and we've also included some from the King of Fighters 14 and the anime series. Cool! So they're not all based on his original games. He sometimes takes off his cap too. For example, it happens during his victory. There's only part of the line. His cap also blows away when he is defeated in stamina mode. You gotta say, are you okay? This game is called King of Fighters Stadium. It looks like one hardcore fighting coliseum. But it's actually a football the stadium. Above the Jumbotron reads, King of Fighters, without V. When we talk about a game title, we need V up front. But the name of the tournament in the game's story is just King of Fighters. I see. This is a very unique stage, and it follows some rules that haven't existed in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate before. Oh, yeah? First, the edge is walled off. Oh. In the Super Smash Bros. series, you need to launch opponents off the stage. It's interesting. That's Here, a nice however, take. the more damage a fighter has accumulated, the more the wall will visually react when they're launched into it. Can you yeah, see? I can see that. It's kind of Eventually. shattering. Yeah. Woo! Fighters will break right through the wall. Oh, there that's are fireworks fun. In the background. 
Basically, this special feature allows you to KO an opponent only after they've accumulated enough damage. Hmm, so no KOing at 28% again, huh, that Ganondorf? Way, you can enjoy the battle more like you would in a traditional fighting game. When you're close to the wall, it's possible to be KO'd even when oh. the damage is low. It's just like in regular stages. Damn. In the real bout Fatal well, Fury series, it's only when you're there close was a feature to the wall. in which the walls could be destroyed and players could suffer a ring out when they hit the wall. This isn't exactly the same, but we made it kind of similar to that. <laughs> we hope you'll enjoy playing at this stage with all its special rules. Oh. It does sound interesting. That sounds um, quite novel. By the way, there are guest characters in the background, right? Since we have the opportunity, I'd like to introduce them to you. Okay, I recognize them. I don't remember their names, though. <laughs> First up, Andy Bogard. He's the adoptive brother of Terry Bogard. Both of them were adopted from an orphanage and raised by Jeff Bogard. However, while Terry's teacher was Jeff Bogard, Andy studied under Mai Shiranui's father. He uses the Kopoken fighting style. Are we going to see Mai? He's one of the three main characters from earlier games in the Fatal Fury series. He's the only one that doesn't have any connection to Geese Howard. He's okay. a Muay Thai champion. Kung Fu Ru. He's the master of the Holy Fist of Eight Ways. And he okay. also trained Jeff Bogart. He can enlarge his body as well. Billy Kane. He's been in many Fatal Fury games since oh, the first uses a cane. One, And he's the right-hand man of Geese Howard. And American, I take game, it. This costume is based on his appearances in King of Fighters 97 onwards. You can't really see his back, but the no smoking symbol is definitely there. <laughs> no smoking. Geese Howard. He's the big boss of Southtown. And he's the rival of Terry Bogart. <laughs> Falling off of buildings is his thing. <laughs> Rock Howard. Which, depending his on the timeline, he either died or survived, so... He's the son of Geese Howard, and Terry actually raised him. Okay. That means his appearance in this game at this age with that look doesn't really jive with the timeline. But Smash is kind of like that to begin with, right? Rock. Kim Kapwan. He uses Taekwondo and considers himself a fighter for justice. His Ho Okeku is very famous. How do you fight with Yamazaki. the pants that His first course. appearance was in Fatal Fury 3, and he's a criminal known as Dark Broker. He's very Dark selfish Broker? and sadistic. Blue Mary. Is he like an evil Her first appearance was in Fatal Fury 3, too. She uses Combat Sambo, and she's a good drinking buddy of Terry's. <laughs> Those were the characters from the Fatal Fury series, but from here on, let me introduce characters from other series. Okay. Athena Asamiya. She's a Psycho Soldier. Psycho Soldier is a memorable game released around 1986, and it was the first title to feature a fully voiced theme song within the game. Oh, cool. This epic song was also remixed for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, and it was recorded in both Japanese and English. Oh, that's always fun. Music start. Shouk Sanagi. Overseas the version. of the King of Fighters series, and he uses the ancient martial arts Sanagiryu. Speaking of the protagonist, there are differences depending on which version you're talking about, like Orochi and Nest. Okay. Anyway, he is forever a school kid. <laughs> Yori Yagami. Originally, he was introduced as Kyok Sanagi's rival, but when I first saw this character in the game at the time, due to his look and attitude, I thought, whoever created this character must be a genius. <laughs> What's with the belt Goro around Daimon. his boots? He's a judo gold medalist belonging to the Japanese team, and he likes to throw his opponents. Yeah, you think? Chang Gohan and Choi Bonge. <laughs> One is an escaped convict, and the other is a slasher. They are currently undergoing rehabilitation under the previously mentioned Kim Kapwan. Well, that's good. Good for them. Ralph Jones and Clark Still. Originally, they were main characters in the Ikari Warriors series before Neo Geo. Okay. They appeared as guests in the Metal Slug series, too. Oh, that's nice. Yo Sakazaki, the protagonist of Art of Fighting. Oh. The original Art of Fighting was released just before Fatal Fury 2. That means it was the first game to implement a true super Oh, those are move. flags waving! How could I not include him? Ah, oh, jeez. King. Her first appearance was in Art of Fighting, and she's a bouncer and bodyguard. She is a beautiful woman with an androgynous sense of style. Next, Yuri Sakazaki. 
She was kidnapped That's in the her. first Art of Fighting game, but after that, she trained hard and mastered Kyokugen Karate in just one year. Oh, in nice. Other words, she's a genius. Like, jeez, if only I had done this a year so, earlier. As you can see, we've included many characters, a total of 20 characters. That's you cool. Know, it's very cumbersome. I mean, it takes a lot of time. But so many people love each and every one of these characters, even outside the confines of their individual series. That's so we cool. We had to do our best by them. By the way, we do you may have noticed that a very important character from the Fatal Fury series was not included. Yes, Mai Shiranui. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate is for good boys and girls of many different ages, <laughs> so we decided not to feature her. Please forgive us. <laughs> She'd have to bend over. Also, my music features a variety of tracks, and the music that plays affects which special guests will Yeah, appear. Bayonetta knows her limits around children. For example, there's, there's my entire Pasta, thing. And when the music is playing, Andy Bogart will seduction. always appear. I hope you look forward to that as well. Nakaruru wasn't there either. She was in the preview. Okay, I'm done providing information, so now let's jump into some actual battles. <laughs> okay, I'm done with this bull. This ah. time, I'm going to play the Terry route of classic mode. On top of that, I wish they would get added into that. Hit the highest intensity level. Into let's that see banner. If I can get all the way up to intensity 9.9. .9. Honestly, playing the game in extreme difficulty while doing commentary is extremely hard. But I'm gonna do it anyway. One or the other is doable, but doing both at once forces me to divide my attention. But that means I should do my best at both. <laughs> do my best. Ganbate, Sakurai! This route is named the King of Smash. Rosetta Three characters who have some sort of connection will appear as a set. A challenge that looks somehow familiar. Okay, the first intensity level is 5.0, so I should be fine. All battles in Terry's route are stamina battles. This stage oh. of special KO rule that I talked about earlier isn't the best match for stamina rules, but oh well. Okay. On his route, a lot of stages feel like the okay. traditional fighting game. Oof. Okay, I did it anyway. Power away! The minimap came up? Of course. Even in this mode, it's not impossible for me to try for a KO. But normally, it'll be over before that. There. Done. Looks like he's saying, give me something. Next, round two. It's the Legend of Zelda team. Don't spoil the whole thing! are in a team because of their similarities. That doesn't mean that they have to be from the same game. Hmm. Okay. This is Let's Go to Seoul, King Cup 1's team. And I've got it set up so that we don't move from the bottom of Prison Tower. He looked tile! It's to simply knock him off the screen, but I'm not such going a glass to do that cannon. because it's not as fun to watch. Mine was really strong, but could not take a hit. That's Oops, so awesome. I knocked him off. Over here. Gonna blow. Will he do it? Mm. <laughs> All right. The boomerang's not coming back. And I can't go to the edge. He formed her phantom pretty far away the first time. Oh no! <laughs> Why don't you just record the commentary the later? You know, you could basically, like, kind of mutter Cancel some it. notes to yourself and then record. He wears his cap backward when he does a power dunk. Ah! <laughs> Good God, she got stage. a face full of something unfortunate of there. Of course, the music track is Taku and Steffi. Of course he says. You might wonder who Taku and Steffi are. But it seems like it means Tanaka and Kitamura. This track is from Fatal Fury 2. There's a giant wrestler named Big Bear, and this is his track. Ah, okay. Regardless of the track name, it's a really famous hard rock song. So please it give is? it a listen. I do like me some hard rock. The original song was called Yusha Raiden. I 
haven't heard from There's that knock on the radio lately. Mostly pop ballads. Big Bear is his true identity. He's called Ryder. Bong! Jump! <laughs> I'm beginning to find the intensity quite tough. Round four. The whole atmosphere is a little different than how it's been up until now, right? We've been to arena style flat yes. stages, but suddenly we're at a battlefield form stage. Oh, okay. Oh, there's an item. There's an arcade game series called Athena, and this stage uses that as a motif. <laughs> oh, you hear back. that? You could have been joining us for you. Now that I'm thinking about it, I suppose both Lady Palutena and the Athena games were possibly an homage to the Athena of Greek mythology. You think? Plus, I wanted to do something where two Come on, Palutena, Palace Athena are together. Really? It's a nice Kokugenyu team. Doesn't take a genius to figure that out, Bucko. If I let my guard down, I'll easily be defeated, so I need to pay attention. Yeah, you think? Not bad, you. Just goes foom up into the sky. By the way, you can use moves like crack shoot to aim for overhead platforms so they have some utility oh. to them. Nice. I kept her in check. Phew, that was close. Looks like that fire bar didn't work out for her. <laughs> Ooh. It's getting brutal. The intensity is close to eight. What do these three have in common? You could say the opposing team is comprised of heroes from different companies. Sonic oh, and Terry okay. are on the stage. Actually, Sticky. Sonic and Terry were both created in 91, so they're the same age. <laughs> Except Sonic is forever 15. And the next year, in 92, Kirby was born. Everyone's getting old. But they're still on active duty. Kirby was from 89. I don't know why. You know, it's easier to fight on sloped ground. When using crack shoot, it's especially easy going uphill. Cool. Yikes. It's too soon to be taking this much damage. I started out with 150 HP, so I feel like I'm losing. Next, you might. Mega Man. He was born in 87. The first Street Fighter came out in 87 as well, so that makes Ryu the same age. <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> Except Ryu was born sometime in the 60s. Don't go off screen. Ah, he went off. I'm sorry. And now, Pac-Man from 1980 is here. My age! Of course, this character was made by Bandai Namco Studios, but when I talk to their team, I'll call him your company's character. <laughs> they always come back saying, oh yeah, our company's character. <laughs> I often have these kinds of exchanges They forget? Oh, that was close. But I won't give in until the very end. Got you, boy! I super special move. How was that? Not enough? Nice, nice. Well, how about now? <laughs> Kapow! It's bad to keep using the same move. Seriously. I thought the guy in the back Next, was a... Ooh, you call this he was wearing some weird glasses, but he was like this with a hat. With the track Soy Sauce for Geese playing on the rooftop, it's got the aura of a final showdown. Okay. Oh, not good. Up next is Ganondorf. I don't want to get hit by him. Not even once. He's huge. Thanks. You can't take things lightly in moments like this one. That was a bad move. Standing there with one foot off the edge. All right, can I do this without getting hit? Yes. Now but who's for a the scary one? Uh, okay. Bayonetta. Oh. I thought it was big bosses, but I, d I guess I didn't see the splash screen. Yep. I'm giving this everything I've got. Oh, that was just dangerous. Pulling off that midair jump was risky. 
Uh oh. She's so good. She's got an interesting Japanese voice. Move. It's definitely more seductive than her English one. But she couldn't take advantage of that opportunity. That would cost her a lot. You know, she was like curled up and then she kind of went more into a free master fall. Hand, but Ryu, Ken, and then Terry. Art of Fighting version 2300000.0 is playing. In other words, it's kind of a theme fight. He's super strong, so I have to work hard. I'm not pacing this out very well. No, you're not. I'm starting from 150 HP, so I wish I defeated Ryu before my HP dropped to 100. <laughs> But I can't give up until the end. I have a super special move. Gunbate! But Terry is last, so he can use the same super special move. But this is no time for chit chat. <laughs> I'm really tough doing this while typing. Oh no! That's cool. Just it's waiting for him this on the no floor good. when he lands. It. it gets even tougher from here. He knows all my tricks! I messed up a perfect shield. <laughs> hey, you are Sometimes whipping through them. I gotta be on guard. Why are you spoiling the entire mode? Yeah, but with a power wave? <laughs> if I could have pulled off a super special move, that would have been awesome. But, all right, did I make it to intensity 9.9? .9? Yes, I did. That was hard work. That's the end of the banner. I think I've made it to nine before. Terry Bogard is really fun to play as, so I hope you enjoy playing as him in such situations. Yeah, I hope so. I've yes, enjoyed playing as everyone except Shulk and Cloud. I don't know what it is. For you. They're just not very fun. For instance, when we were deciding which songs to include in this set, we thought about concentrating on songs related to Terry, but there were a lot of big band style songs that didn't really fit the mood of battle. Yeah, I can imagine. That aside, the music of SNK has always been great, right from the beginning. So this time, we selected tracks that could be called SNK style. Probably gonna have Basically, something from Metal Slug then too. we expanded the selection a bit to include series outside of just Fatal Fury and The King of Fighters. SNK songs have always been great, really. You know, I noticed earlier he had said um, that when it's King of Fighters, it refers to the tournament, but when it's THE King of Fighters, it refers to the game. He referred to the game as King of Fighters at one point. This was true before Neo Geo, and all the way from the old The King of Fighters games to the arrangements in the latest installment, The King of Fighters 14. Sounds good. We did a lot of digging around, and finally managed to narrow our many candidates down to 50 songs. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? We intended to do something like this, of course. So we submitted our 50 proposals to SNK, expecting them to pick out maybe 10 or 20 that they considered acceptable. But they told us they were, okay. As a result, we've pretty much added in 50 songs. Pretty much? Have a look at the list. That's how New we poem that the, the South Thailand had, wants to we tell. We hard to deliver some of the best remixes. This was a very special one-off case, and I don't think we'll be Game able to do the same for other series. To be honest, I think that being able to hear such a selection might make the fighter's pass worth quite a bit more than its price. I do hope you'll enjoy it. Challenger Pack 4 comes with a spirit board, too. The spirit board can be selected via the spirits menu. Have a look at the back. <laughs> if it looks familiar to you, you'll start feeling pretty nostalgic. Shinkiro-san's artwork is always so nice and vibrant, isn't it? 
You can also look forward to mock tournaments featuring each of the characters. That old school Athena and Ralph and Clark artwork really is something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now for the Mii Fighters. Please have a look. All right. Anyone gonna break the internet like last time? Ah. Ah. <laughs> uh, but she doesn't come with a bird. I didn't know she was from Samurai Showdown. <laughs> She's gotta have the bird though! <laughs> yeah. Got some smooth jazz. More blocks? Yes, more blocks! Are they gonna give us Heihachi again? I know he's from a completely different series, but... Okay, just, yeah, like last time. I mean, Virtual Fighter is also... Come on, give us Heihachi again. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no one to break the internet this time. Those really need to be included in the Fighters Pass. Come on. SNK was also involved with the Mii Fighter set this time, so it has a strong fighting game influence. Yeah, no kidding! It borrows a lot from the series Nakoruru comes from, like her wind slash attack, so I hope you'll enjoy those little details. Awesome, awesome. Moving on to Amiibo, here's the new lineup. Simon, Krom, and Incineroar. Each of these will be released on Friday, November 15th. That comes out during Komori Khan. Next, let's discuss the details of the updates. We've made some improvements to battle arenas. Okay. First, we're making it so you can send messages to each other in a battle arena. The messages are preset. So there's that, and also, the player who created the arena can now change the rules. Makes sense. We've also added the option to my arena, a my rules, or Omega form at random in the stage settings. Ah. Aside that sounds from that, fun. you can now pick Elite only as an arena type. <laughs> Furthermore, quick play won't be the only way to play with people you don't know. As long as the arena type is set to public and no password is set, we've made it so anyone is now free to join. That sounds like so a I good job. Enjoy that. I, I'm kind of surprised I didn't have Terry that already. Is due for distribution on November 6th. If you have the Fighter's Pass, you'll be able to get him straight away, Today. or you can purchase him separately. I had to look down at the corner of my computer well, to see I that. I think that wraps it up for our Terry Bogard showcase. I hope we were able How much to more time is left. Field. By the way, his reveal trailer was aired in advance. It was created using SNK pixel art. The complete version of it, including the gameplay portion, is finally ready. I'd like to show it to you after this. Ah. Uh... Now this is something of an inside story, but I of course wrote the plot for SNK's pixel art pack reveal trailer. When the invitation comes out, you really might be called how it older now. Don't be late, S. That is not what I wrote. It makes me think, ugh, this is why I hate inside jokes. After leaving it to the staff, it snuck its way in there. <laughs> I just want you to know that the S is also the Super Smash Brothers series S. Well then, let's move on to the intro movie. Okay, so it's just Terry's reveal again. That's some nice music there though. Yeah. 
Maybe I'm just gonna open up. so funny you see terry smart he waits for it to land <laughs> hey, come on. i haven't heard a single are you okay this entire time There it goes! Hey, come on, come on. Gotcha. Gotcha. But he just... Are you okay? Isn't the same. You gotta say it loud. I just noticed the logo in the middle. The O is the Smash logo. <laughs> That was his final smash. Okay. I'm a dumb. Foomph. I keep doing that. That was not a foomph at all. That was more of a... I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. But it's zone is still under development. We crammed in a little too much content this time. Hopefully I'll be able to make future showcases a little shorter. Will you? All right, and there's no uh, new reveal. That's fine. I mean, I, I found the costumes a little underwhelming, especially after last time gave us Sans and Team Rocket. I did make Domino, but I had to give her not the hat because the hat hides her hair. So, uh. Also, if she's a little chunky, it kind of, the me proportions, yeah. But I figured Domino is supposed to look young, so this is just kind of a younger looking version. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, um, Terry sounds too technical for me, but then I guess Ryu on paper sounds too technical, and I'm surprisingly good with him. In Smash, not in Street Fighter. Like I said, this is about the only fighting game I could play. I, I, I just, I, I've heard that autistic people tend to be clumsy, um, but I don't know. I think I'm kind of especially clumsy. <laughs> uh, I guess uncoordinated is really more the term there, but I just don't have very good manual dexterity and. I don't know. On the subject of me fighters, you know, obviously Sans kind of broke the internet there, showing up as a gunner. So I'm just thinking, who would be a sword fighter and a brawler that would break the internet like that? Because I can't think of anybody. The only person I could think of who could come close in sword fighter is uh, Geralt or Geralt or however the heck you say his name from The Witcher. Um, but he wouldn't make it in because he's originally from a book. So, and I can't think of anybody who would make it in as a brawler at all. I mean, honestly, even if they put Un uh, Undine in there, or Undyne, that's right, because it's undying the undying um i don't think she would even break the internet near as much is, is it just me or would she make a much better fighter than sans I, I just everyone wanted him but i think she has a more fleshed out move set um yeah <laughs> Yeah, 
way, though, yeah, I've never actually played a Fatal Fury game. Uh, as many video games as I played, um, I never got around to that. Um, I guess it's because I never really rented a whole lot of games, so all the ones I played are ones I bought, so... Uh, never had any OGO. Um any of that stuff. So it's just kind of a little bit, I don't know what. My death battle reaction is still uploading at 55%. It should have loaded entirely by now. I don't understand this. My parents have like the super internet. Uh, because they have fiber. I don't. Ugh. But yeah, the uh, he looks really interesting, and I'm going to go download him right after this, so I'm really hoping that uh, works out well. Um, brick. I should probably go lie down. I'm still pretty sick. I called off work tomorrow and everything. Ugh. <coughs> <coughs> Okay, so I'm gonna go. I had fun watching that, you know. Um, I know, uh, I I know I seemed like really disappointed in the choice of Terry, and honestly, he he probably wouldn't even be in my top twenty most wanted characters. But you know, I was hyped. It was just, you know, and I'm glad he's in because of what he means to the fighting game community and thus to video games as a whole. I was not disappointed in any way for him. I was disappointed, but that was because of all the leakers who were like, yeah, Terry's in. It's like, d do you people not have any respect for anybody? And, uh, God, it's the same I go on Reddit and everyone on the Pokemon sub is going on about the spoilers for that, or for Sword and Shield. And I say, guys, listen, hide the spoilers. And they tell me, you know, if you don't like it, you can just leave. You just don't, don't tell other people what to do. And I'm like, so you guys can't be civil and respectful. So I'm the one that's supposed to leave. Because you guys want to be rude. I got called a baby. I got accused of telling people not to post spoilers, which I never said. You know, post all the spoilers you want. Just put them behind, you know, put them where people aren't going to read them in the title or in the um, first few lines that they see on their feed. Someone on Rare Insults posted a picture because someone had, like, done some sort of review of them. And I saw, I saw one of the new species in that because someone had said something about it that was funny and insulting. <sighs> Which, I mean, their comment was kind of true, but I'm not going to say it here. Because I respect the right of people to not know spoilers, Okay. It's like, you know, seriously, you know, people on the Pokemon sub are all like, oh, it's easy to avoid spoilers. Just don't look at them. And it's like, you don't know if something's going to be a spoiler unless it says spoiler in front of it until you look at it. And I'm telling them, listen, go down the feed and see how many spoilers you see. And they're always like, oh, I don't see any spoilers. And it's like, there's tons of them. How are you not noticing them? People are talking about new species. They're talking about um, all kinds of stuff. Uh, You know, it's just be respectful, okay? You can talk about spoilers, but don't shove them in people's faces, okay? That's all we're asking. Just make it so we don't have to look at them. And I've been going on for literally almost an hour, so I'm gonna go. Bye-bye.